Well, property taxes are coming down. State lawmakers wrap up a four day special session, passing a bill that will save homeowners hundreds of dollars. In exchange, the proponents of two ballot measures that would have made deeper cuts say they'll pull them. Good evening. I'm Kelly White. And I'm Karen Lee. Michael has the night off tonight. Your political reporter Sean Boyd has been covering this all week long, really for years now. And Sean, <laughs> Democrats and Republicans both supported this bill. It, it passed with overwhelming mm -hmm. bipartisan support. The bill is the fifth property tax relief measure in four years and the second in just four months. Combined, the two most recent bills will save homeowners and small businesses one and a half billion dollars a year and prevent the kind of spikes we saw last year from happening again. I just want to say yes, this is a great day. For now Senator Barb Kirkmeyer, passage of the property tax relief bill is a win for people like her 94-year-old neighbor. Today is the day I get to go home and tell my neighbor, my 94-year-old friend, that yes, she'll probably be able to stay in her home because we got additional property tax relief for her and for all Coloradoans and for small businesses. Kirkmeyer and Senator Chris Hansen among the architects of the bill, a compromise forged with proponents of two ballot measures. This is very significant relief when you add up everything that we've done. Um, and I think you've done it in a very targeted and responsible way. The Office of State Planning and Budget says the compromise, combined with another bill passed in the spring, will cut taxes two to three hundred dollars a year, depending on where you live. In Denver, homeowners will save two hundred thirty-three dollars on average next year. In Adams, three hundred twenty-four dollars. Garfield, one hundred eighty-eight. And Pueblo, one hundred seventy-three. And the savings go up in twenty twenty-six. Commercial and industrial property taxes will also drop and future increases in property taxes will be capped at five to six percent going forward. We do think that it's a win for taxpayers. Michael Fields, head of Advance Colorado, one of the groups behind the ballot measures, says the cap on future increases was non-negotiable. There's nothing that was in place that would stop another huge spike like that without this bill passing or without our measures passing. So we didn't want to risk uh, getting no relief for people, getting no cap for people. The legislature held up its end of the bargain and field says so will he by pulling his ballot measures. We don't have any credibility if we don't follow through with our word, um, but it works both ways. If they don't follow through with their word and they change the deal or go back and try to change stuff, we still have the ability to move forward. Governor Polis says a deal's a deal. This is a real win for Colorado, uh, and I'm excited. It'll make Colorado more competitive, put more money in people's pockets, and give people the confidence that their rates won't go up too much in the future. Governor Polis says he won't sign the bill until the ballot measures are pulled. The last day to withdraw a ballot measure is September 6. Proponents have also agreed not to bring any new ballot, property tax ballot measures for six years. The bill will mean less revenue for local governments and schools, although the state is required to backfill lost revenue for the schools. So for now, property tax wars are over. <laughs> yeah. Nice and It's down. complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is complicated. Yeah. But now the state's going to have to pay for the, the holes, right? So we'll see how In it goes. In the schools, for yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, Sean, thank you so much. We are following.